and good morning everyone hello uh this is my microphone here yeah <laughs> good morning good sunday and i hope you're good and the and i hope you check the last video we did about the ancient egyptian accounts on the great pyramid because today we will go through the classical report so we already did the herodotus report back uh, like a week or two weeks ago so today we go when I go, we're gonna go through the greek or roman period and and manito as well so what these people say is about the great pyramid what did they know how were how was the great pyramid looking back then and what were you supposed to do with it and what did they say what did they know about it so i have got these four people i can tell you <laughs> and uh, let's go one by one the first is manito and manito states that was the jewish building the great pyramid but I don't know how, but I mean, if I'm wrong, please correct me, but this is what I understand from the text. So these same people overthrew the, uh, I mean, this is the quote from, uh, so overthrew the then reigning dynasty, stamped out idolatry and endeavored to firmly establish in the place thereof the worship of the one true God, having completed the great pyramid, migrated eastward into the land afterwards known as Judea and founded there the city of Salem which later became Jerusalem the holy city so you know guys I don't know like is this any like true <laughs> I mean obviously we know that the great pyramid was not built by the Jewish but what did, I mean yeah if anybody knows about this Manito claim please let me know what what he is talking about um, after Manito, the other big uh, relevant uh, account is from Diodorus Siculus, and uh, I actually gonna put this screen here. Yeah, let me let me just do this. Yeah, so then <laughs> just a second. Okay, yeah, maybe this is better. So um, also let me put it bigger. Okay. So Diodorus Siculus, Diodorus Siculus was a Greek, if I'm not wrong, it was not, it was not Roman, it was Greek, and um, it, we are in around, we, we are in the first yeah. century BC, and um, and and yeah, so like, basically he says that the pyramid was complete, still intact by then, and there was no decay into into it, uh, but there was no apex stone. So, I mean, we're not going to go through the whole um, quote here, but basically this is what in, you know, he states. So, it was, you know, he doesn't mention any door, he doesn't mention any underground, you know, uh, chambers or in, you know, interior chambers, anything. Just the pyramid is fine, <laughs> it's just the top missing. Curious, because uh, Herodotus... Um, at least knew that there was some internal, uh, or not internal, but subterranean, you know, chamber going on. Um, Strabo. So Strabo um, was, uh, again, a Greek Roman, but I don't know how much Roman he was. Like, there was probably, like, uh, a, a mixture back then. Uh, but I don't know, like, correct me. Again, please, guys, correct me if I'm wrong every time. But he wrote a big book called Geography. Uh, in where he basically s states something quite crazy because he states that there was this stone which you could remove and that will show a well going down in the pyramid. Now, he, I mean, some people take this, like for example, Peter take this as a doorway, but I don't see, you know, he just says that there is a stone that may be taken out. It doesn't say that this is, is a doorway, right? With hinges and things like that. So it could just have been just one single, you know, stone that we could just, you know, open and you have the descending passageway. Now, the other thing is that he states that there is a sloping passage to the foundations, which I believe he's talking about a descending corridor. And a lot of vermins infested the pit. <laughs> so, well, that, I mean, imagine back then. So this, this this is actually the first report that we can actually say that somebody could have been actually there taking the, the stone, let's say, door <laughs> out and watch inside, you know? We, we, I mean, we don't have to believe that he went, but we can say that somebody did and t told to, to Strabo how, how the whole thing was. 
So we have the first actually account of somebody uh, that you know saw <laughs> a little bit of the of the of the interior. And uh, imagine back then, like you don't imagine how it would have looked like back then. Like you go up a little bit on the pyramid, you remove the stone, and then it's all dark and smelly and full of insects and probably vermin, as he says. So that was like a pit. You couldn't think about any chamber or anything. That's just just a pit. Uh, where, they f where you, you probably have the river Nile down there, you know? So that's how, that's what, you know, gives origin to the, all the, you know, other theories uh, that Pyramids was not a tomb. So, you know. Uh, and then let's go with Pliny the Elder, which is the last account we're gonna talk today. And um, Pliny the Elder was a Roman, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> and uh, the first century uh, after. I mean, after Jesus, so AD, <laughs> and uh, he wrote a big book again uh, about natural history, and his account is quite interesting because he states that there was this well about 86 cubits deep. Now, some people say that he is referring to the to the grotto or to the well shaft. I don't think so. I don't think I don't think he he although the, the measures could be like almost there with the with the with the well shaft. I don't think he's stating I don't think he's he's referring to the well shaft. Uh well, yeah. I <laughs> mean this is what I'm thinking. Um I think he's actually referring to like probably somebody told him that there was this descending corridor and it's about 86 cubic deep maybe would, maybe it was wrong but i don't think he's referring to the well shaft uh, otherwise he would have told uh, he would speak about other you know about the, the, the actual descending passage and, uh, and uh, he would distinguish also with the with the chamber so i don't even know how he would have ever uh, got inside and measure such a such a well shaft so no uh, this is for me is not uh, an account from of the well shaft um, what can we take from from these uh, accounts uh, you know what what can we take so I, I think what we can take is that the pyramids were intact and uh, yeah maybe like the apex stone was missing uh, for some time um, we can take that the classical also people didn't know anything about <laughs> this you know monuments and that they had to rely on other people like the Egyptians themselves themselves uh, from which the stories uh, were told um, yeah I mean and then we can we can also say that obviously they didn't know about any internal chamber right they knew there was a shaft like a descending passage they knew uh, and they well, but that's it, right? <laughs> it was all inaccessible, and even if they knew that it was this descent, they, they, they never went down inside to check what's down there, right? So what we can, we can, what we know, and what we can say about this is that yes, the pyramids were intact, and the apex was missing, and the chambers were inaccessible um, for some reason, um, and that they believed that the actual chamber of the burial chamber was outside the pyramid so so i mean it's totally like uh, understandable like you go there you open that and then you say what well, you the last thing you will think is that there was a, you know a burial chamber down there why like it's just a pit taking the you know the water from the nile for sure you know if you were back there imagine also you have to put things in context that that to go down there uh, apart from the smell, apart from you need a candle, and uh, imagine how hard it would have been uh, to just adventure down there, you know, without uh, you know preparing yourself very well. And these people just travel a little bit around. They were not living in uh, in Egypt, like you know, they didn't have the time to just you know explore the pyramid and things like that. They were writing books about history and geography, you know. So this is just a little part of their uh, whole account on Egypt. So um, the Great Pyramid was not their main uh, focus. 
So yeah, I think this is everything about the classical reports. Uh, add this into the Herodotus report and the G ancient Egyptian ones, and we know what the ancient uh, spoke about the about about the Great Pyramid. It's not much, right? Uh, but next week uh, or the next two, we will sp we will talk about the uh, accounts from from the from the Arabs themselves. So because after the Romans, then the Arabs comes. Right, so they left also some uh, writing uh, about the Great Pyramid. So that would be very interesting because there is magic there. There is like a lot of um, superstitions and things like that. It's just amazing. So I guess I see you soon for the next episode. And yeah, if you, oh, I mean, if, please like uh, if you like to subscribe, do it. <laughs> and then if you like the video, like the video. And thank you for coming to my channel. <laughs> bye bye.